Hello, I'm making this video uh, in response to uh, part of a conversation I'm having with a friend. Um, it, the conversation, you know, they get kind of mixed up sometimes because there's we're um, talking about choosing the right type of software for different devices. And of course, there's three main categories to look at when you're talking about this sort of thing. You're looking at functionality, you're looking at privacy, and then you're looking at software freedom and um, the ability to control what your devices do. And in the last part of what my friend sent, uh, he said, because I said, you know, not being able to modify things on your phone and having a company control everything your phone does is basically the same as slavery. They're, they're locking you in and deciding they're controlling your life. They're in control. They're your master. So his response is, it's like your car. Are you a slave to it because you abide by its manufactured limitations and don't modify it entirely at your will? Am I more free because I repair my own car and change my own oil? And the answer to that, yes. And right here he says, do you abide by the manufacturer's limitations and don't modify entirely? We're not talking about modifying things entirely. We're having, talking about having the ability to. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you can't. But having that ability taken away is controlling over you. Um, if a company decides what software you can install on your phone, or computer and they say you can only install these programs and then they have the right to go in there and remove those programs whenever they want that's wrong uh, if they decide what websites you're allowed to go to and how you get there and what programs you use to go to those websites that's control they are controlling you they are your master you're a slave to them this is basic software freedom stuff most of you uh, who are watching this video uh, probably are familiar with this but in response yes if I had a car and that car was locked down to where I can't change the own, my own oil. I can't change my own tires. I can't replace the spark plugs. I can't do whatever I want to that. Obviously, you know, a manufacturer can say whatever they want. But to actually go in there and, like, lock it down, weld shut the hood, and then come after you and sue you if you actually try to fix any of that, that would be wrong. And the thing is, a lot of people, when you talk to them, and, and the car analogy has been done over and over and over again, uh, when it comes to talking about software freedom, because it's, it's such a good analogy. So it's funny that he brings it up trying to argue the other way. Um, but yes, if you were buying a car that the manufacturer did not allow you to make any changes to it, to where they controlled uh, beyond that, if they decided that the car is going to tell you where you can and can't go, you want to go to Walmart? Sorry, we don't let you go to Walmart in this car. You're going to Target. That would be control. They're controlling you. If when they're going to Target, they decide the route you were going to take and you couldn't change that route. Well, now they're controlling you more, especially if they're the ones that are the only people who can sell you the gas. You know, they're going to make you take the longer route to benefit them. Those things are control. That would be slavery. And if you bought a car like that, I would tell you next time you buy a car to buy a different car. Right. Um, so the same with software. Now, you know, if you have a proprietary device uh, such as an iPhone, uh, which is what this conversation is about. I'm not saying throw your iPhone, iPhone out and get a new phone right away. But next time you go to buy a phone, think about it. And also going back to the car analogy, let's say we did have two cars. And one, um, again, one car would have more uh, ability for you to fix it than another. Uh, then you're also looking at price. Uh, let's say, you know, I'm looking at a $50,000 car that I can do whatever I want to. And a $20 car or $20,000 car that I can't. Maybe I can't afford a $50,000 car, but when it comes to free software, and especially when it comes to phone devices, uh, there's a large range of devices. My last few phones that I've had to buy from me or my wife, I didn't pay over $200. Very, very happy. They work great. Uh, I have a choice on what hardware I get. Um, so you're looking at an iPhone, which costs more money, but can do less things that comes into the functionality. Uh, and they do have limitations, which is actually how this conversation started. And part of what he talks about is, uh, the conveniency, the conveniency of it. So far, I was just trying to send him a video file, a download, but of course, iPhones don't let you download MP4s, uh, directly through a web browser or MP3s or any type of media file, because they want you to go through their software, um, which is a type of control. Um, he criticizes me because I use Google Fi as a cell phone service. Well, you've got to use some sort of cell phone service if you want. So, uh, again, I'm not trying to make this an argument between Apple and Google, which is what he keeps bringing it back to. Uh, my argument, this argument is about, um, you know, something like iOS versus Android or 
if you don't like Android, some other open source alternatives. There's like the Prism project and a few others. I know there's not a huge amount of it out there, but uh, another part of the problem with these type of conversations is everyone tries to, and even after you explain it, they keep bringing it back. Google versus Apple, Google versus Apple. This is not what it is. I don't like Google, you know, a lot of things Google does. Android is not Google. Android is a, a free and open source program put out there with uh, the community support. And Google just happens to uh, have their own version of that that a lot of developers use. But most Android devices, if you check before you buy it, are very easy to unlock and you can remove all those Google services and not use them. He criticizes me for using some such as Google Maps, um, and Google Photos. Google Photos I mainly use for storage, but whatever. Um, and for me, there's a difference between using the services and having software. On my desktop computer, I don't have any of the uh, uh, proprietary Google stuff. Um, on my phone, I've got three applications, four applications. I've got Maps, Hangouts, Photos, and um, the Google Fi app, which I don't need to use Google Fi, but it, it gives me some improvements. And yeah, if you want to criticize me for using that, that's fine. Um, but that's not the argument. Just because I say something and do something else, you can call me a hypocrite if you want. But uh, the example I give him and the response is, let's say I said murder is wrong, and then I go and murder somebody. Doesn't mean that murder is now right, Chris is wrong, because he murdered and then went, you know, he said murder is wrong. My point that murder is wrong is wrong is e even if I do it. So criticizing me uh, and saying you're that, that you want to use Apple because I use you know, that much of Apple software on, or Google software on my phone, fine. You know, that's fine. And I've already admitted that I shouldn't be using those. And really, some of those are convenience. The only one that I really feel like, uh, you know, there's not a great alternative for is the Google Maps. Um, and mainly, it's a catch-22 because Google Maps does such a great job because they're tracking you all the time. Uh, but then that gets into the whole privacy thing. So again, there's the three aspects of it, the functionality, which an iPhone uh, is just pathetic in its abilities uh, compared to Android. And again, I'm not even a huge fan of Android. I think Android kind of sucks. I just think in comparison, it's 100 times, if not more, better than iOS. Uh, and that's just functionality wise. Uh, there are so many things. There's, there's nothing I've ever heard of that an iPhone can do, uh, that iOS can do, that Android can't. Um, but the other way around, I can go on and on and on about things. You can't change your home screen. You can't add um, URL shortcuts, shortcuts to websites on your home screen unless it's through Safari. You can't do it with Firefox or Chrome or whatever browser. You can only install uh, browsers and other software that they allow, unlike an Android device where you can, you have the Google Play Store if you choose to use that. Um, but you can go in and with one little click in settings, you can say allow third-party apps and then you can install whatever you want. They don't limit you. They don't control what you do and what you install. Um, so, but yeah, going back to the car analogy and really anything else in your life. Most people, if, if a company did what Apple does on their devices to other parts of their life, uh, they would throw a fit. If, if some company came in and told you uh, where, you know, what cereals you can buy and how much you can eat uh, you know, and they controlled that, you would, you would throw a fit. Uh, but on your phone, which for most people are, are, is a very important device. Now, his point is he's not connect, you know, he's not obsessed with his phone, basically. You know, he can, he can turn it off when he wants. It's like, yeah, but still, I bet you use it a lot. Um, and it is a main part of your life. And again, this guy uh, is, uh, is very privacy uh, concerned when he talks, but then you're using Google products, which there's no way with, again, with any type of uh, cell phone by default, the way they work, you're going to be connecting to a tower and the tower has to know who you are to route things to you. So having a cell phone, there is going to be some sort of, you know, uh, monitoring and tracking. It's just part of having it, even if you have an old flip phone. But at least with an Android device, I could install a community port of Android the source code is fully available. We know exactly what it does. I can remove Google services. Uh, and and for the most part, I know what's going on. Where an Android or an iOS, Apple device, you have no control over that. iOS does what it does. You don't know what it's really doing because it's all proprietary. And there's really no way to change it out. Uh, even if you do get some other offerings running on there, which people have in the past, have gotten versions of Linux and Android running on at least older iPhones. You know, you have hardware issues. Um, and it's just a matter of getting it booted, but that doesn't mean that everything works. Anyway, um, that's, that's my thoughts on this and, uh, my response to that. Uh, and 
Yeah, the car analogy was a good one because it kind of proves my point. Anyway, thanks for watching.